وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Can we recite Surah Al-Mubarakah Al-Fatiha for our marhumeen and marhumeen of all mu'minina and mu'minat? But before that, Salat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah. Ar-Rahmanirrahim. Imanik yawmi. Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka na'astaghim. Surat al-Mustaghim. Surat al-Ladhina al-Ajanayim. Qayyari. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله وحنا الله الصمد يعني الملك أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم صلى الله عليك يا رسول الله صلى الله عليك وعلى أهل بيتك المظلومين صلى الله عليك يا أبا عبد الله صلى الله عليك يا ابن رسول الله يا رحمة الله الواسعة ويا باب نجاة الأمة ما خاب من تمسك بكم وأمن من لجأ إليكم يا ليتنا يا ليتنا كنا معكم سادتي فنفوز فوزا عظيما قال الله تعالى في كتابه المجيد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والذين تبوأوا الدار والإيمان من قبلهم يحبون من هاجر إليهم ولا يجدون في صدورهم حاجة مما أوتوا ويؤثرون على أنفسهم ولو كان بهم خصاصة ومن يوق شه نفسه فأولئك هم المفلحون آمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم صل على محمد وآل محمد اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد beautify beautify this majlis of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas by reciting another salawat اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد there is a word in English which they call it altruism when we look at the definition of altruism, we come to know that it is a belief in practice for well-being of others. It is a belief which is coupled by practicing. You regard others before yourself. Also, we come to know that it is a concern for happiness of others. They say also altruism it is to promote others, other people's well-being. You promote other people's well-being before you. Altruism, we can call it also, is self, selfless. We have selfish and selfless. Altruism is that. In Arabic language, this is known as al-ithar. Al-ithar, in other words, is to prefer others before yourself. It's not easy. It's something which is very difficult to do it. 
in islam we are encouraged to have this idea of al ithar in islam we are encouraged to be people who think about others for example if you take a hadith of the holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam rasulullah says man asbaha wa lam yahtam bi umuri al muslimin fa laysa bi muslim anyone who wakes up in the morning and he doesn't pay attention to the affairs of other muslims he will not be muslim altruism rasulullah wants us to pay attention to the affairs of other muslims affairs of other people in another narration he says man bata laysa minna man bata shab'anan wajaruhu ja'ir laysa minna he will not be amongst us the one who stays at night he goes to sleep while his belly is full and his neighbor sleeps hungry he will not be amongst us laysa minna man bata shab'anan wajaruhu ja'ir islam wants us to pay attention to other beings not only human beings also even animals so the ayah which i have recited is in surah al-hashr surah al-hashr is surah number 49 number 59 in the holy quran ayah number 9 59:9 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says والذين تبوؤوا الدار والايمان من قبلهم and those who took the city of Medina الدار as their abode and not only that والايمان and they decided to become muslims they believed in allah and rasulullah they left their homes their families their clans and they decided to migrate to Medina walladhina tabawwa udara wal imana min qablihim Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says there were people who decided to go to Medina to do hijra these are known as muhajirun but muhajiruna when they migrated to Medina they found other people in Medina who are known as al ansar so walladhina tabawwa'u ad-dara wal imana min qablihim Allah talks about al ansar that ansar they were in Medina al ansar they accepted islam while rasulullah was in makkah and al ansar followed whatever the teachings of rasulullah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says their characteristics yuhibbuna man hajara ilayhim Al Ansar loved Al Muhajirin yuhibun they used to have mahabba for those migrants immigrated to Medina normally if you migrated into this country you know definitely how difficult it was for you to settle in and even maybe up to today you may find those people who who think that they have more rights than you you make success they say how come you came as a stranger a few years later now you have more than us sometimes even people fight people are killed because of this al ansar they were opposite yuhibuna man hajara ilayhim they loved those who did hijra to Medina wala yajiduna fi sudurihim hajatan mimma utu in their hearts there was no anything to show negative for whatever the muhajirin were given in their hearts al ansar their hearts were clean because they had that mahabba and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says walau kana bihim khasasa even though the ansar wanted whatever the muhajirin got it and even though the ansar wanted and they were in need of whatever muhajirin were given but they did not show any hatred to them allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa man yuqa shuha nafsihi fa ulaika humul muflihun anyone who has control 
anyone who is selfless, anyone who is ready to spend for other people who are in need to prefer others above himself or before himself, فَأُولَئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ These are the ones who will gain success. So now when we look at the history of Muhajirina and Ansar, we are told that when Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, Allahumma sallila Muhammad wa alihi. When Rasulullah decided to migrate from Makkah to Medina and those Muhajirina who decided to migrate from Makkah to Medina, they reached Medina, some of them were so poor because they left their properties in Makkah. They left whatever they gained in Makkah and their life was so difficult for them. So they had to depend on their brothers and sisters in Medina. Rasulullah taught akhlaq of altruism to the people of Medina to the level that these Ansar were ready to share their houses with the immigrants. Today, wallah, when we hear the immigrants who have migrated from the countries and you hear, for example, the, those who are inhabitants of the place where they go, they open the doors for muhajirin. You say, wow, this is very good. What kind of teaching is this? But Islam taught us 1,400 years before what we see today. Ansar opened their doors. They gave the muhajirin whatever they wanted. History is telling us that there were some of the Ansar who decided to divide their properties into half. You are my brother. You don't have anything. Sister, you don't have anything. Take half of whatever I have. Let's go to the market. I have a store here or stall. I know you just came. You don't have anything. Half is yours, half is mine. For those who are farmers, they took their friends. They say, let's go. This is my farm. I cultivate the land. Half is yours, half is mine. I have some money. I know you do not. Half is mine, half is yours. To this level, Ansar wa to Muhajirin. And how this success came, Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. When he entered Medina, he did three things which are very important in our history to know. Number one, he decided to make a masjid which is known today as Masjid al-Nabawi. In order for this masjid to be the center of Islamic affairs, not only for Salah. That masjid Rasulullah, when he moved to Medina, every individual in Medina wanted Rasulullah to stay at his house. The Holy Prophet said, I know, I have all of you as my followers, as friends, let allow this camel to go. Wherever this camel will stop, there I will stay. The camel took Rasulullah until it stopped at the house of Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, the companion of Rasulullah. The Holy Prophet said, here is where I'm going to stay. Abu Ayyub al-Ansari was a well-to-do person. He said to Rasulullah, Ya Rasulullah, I have this house. I have the ground floor as well as the first floor. You as Rasulullah, go and live in the first floor. Leave me to stay in the ground floor. Rasulullah said to Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, said, no, Abu Ayyub, I have a lot of guests. They will disturb you. You stay in the first floor. Allow me to stay in the ground floor because my friends, my companions will disturb you. He decided to stay there. In front of the house of Abu Ayyub al-Ansari, there was a, a place which is just empty. Rasulullah said, I want to buy this. Those people who were there, they said, no, we give you free of charge. He said, no, I don't want. I want to contribute something. So he bought the land and he decided to build the masjid where today when we go for Ziyara of Medina, we pray in the actual masjid, Rasulullah bought that land. Some of our scholars say, when someone comes to you as a donor, he says, I can buy a masjid for you. 
the whole masjid I will pay for you. You just come and pray. Tell him we want to follow the sunnah of Rasulullah. You can pay some and we too need to contribute. Why? Because we need that sense of belonging. If someone may buy the masjid for us, we may say, well, this masjid belongs to him. And maybe shaitan, may Allah protect all of us, may come to us one day and you say, you guys, you are causing trouble to my masjid, go out. It may happen like that. Rasulullah said, no, I want to buy and I want everyone to come, contribute. They started building the masjid. I'm sure you have seen in, the, in some of the movies like uh, Risala, every companion participated in building that masjid to have the sense of belonging. So that was first thing which Rasulullah did in Medina. And this particular masjid, masjid was for salah. Masjid al-Nabawi, marriages, aqid of nikah used to take place there. Salatul janaza, Rasulullah used to pray for his companions at the masjid. Masjid became a center point of the activities of Muslims. You remember, for example, Christians of Najran, when they came to visit Rasulullah, where did they, did they go? Masjid. Rasulullah welcomed them there. I wonder today, in some places when non-Muslims, for example, want to come to the masjid, we say, no, you are not allowed to come here. Rasulullah allowed them. He said, come, let us discussion inside masjid. And even you remember one story that there was one particular kafir. He entered the masjid of Rasulullah and he urinated inside the masjid. He said, I want to cause trouble to you. Companions wanted to kill him. Rasulullah said, no, 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 leave, leave him. Let him finish. He finished and he said to them, do, come and do, tahara, clean the masjid. They did. And then the Holy Prophet took an opportunity to talk to him. And he said, this is a masjid. This is the place where we pray. This is a holy place. Why did you do that? In a calm way, Rasulullah won the heart of this kafir. He became a Muslim. Now, for us, when we remember the masjid today, we sometimes have this idea. Some of us, we want to build a masjid. Others want to build Husseinia. Others want to build other things. When we ask those people who want to build Husseinia only and not masjid, why do you want to build Husseinia not masjid? They say because ahkamul masjidiyah are difficult. Rulings, when it comes to masjid, sometimes we cannot enter the masjid when we are in a such state like Janaba. Or oh, some sisters cannot enter the masjid. So in, in order for us to participate all, don't build a masjid, build Husseinia. Well, it's fine if you want to do that. But don't, don't forget that there are certain acts of worship, ibadah. If we do not have masjid, we will never do them. Followers of Ahlul Bayt. For example, i'tikaf. In Shahru Ramadan, according to mother of Ahlul Bayt, you cannot do i'tikaf except in masjid. You can do other ibadah in Husseiniyah, but i'tikaf has to be in the masjid. So we do need masjid. We do need Husseiniyah. We do need other facilities. We need to organize the, ourselves properly the way Rasulullah organized and he built the masjid in Medina. Number one. Number two. The Holy Prophet signed a peace treaty of Medina, which is known as Medina Charter. Mithaqul Medina where he said Muslims and non-Muslims need to live at peace. We don't want fighting because of the faith, ideology, religion. You are Muslim and you are not. Let us fight. No, we want peace. Rasulullah signed that. Number three, he decided to make the people who are Muslims from Makkah and those who are in Medina to be brothers. This is known as al ukhuwa brotherhood between Muhajirina and Ansar. Rasulullah asked every Ansari to take one Muhajir to make him as his brother or sister. When it came to Amirul Muminin, you all remember that Rasulullah, when Ali alayhi salam went to Rasulullah and he said, I want to take a, a brother, but you have not allowed me so far. Rasulullah said, wait Ali, until at the end, the Holy Prophet said, Anta akhi fi dunya wal akhirah. 
Ali, you are my brother in this world as well as in the hereafter. So when we look at this ayah 59, ayah number 9, وَالَّذِينَ تَبَوَّعُ الدَّارَ وَالْإِيمَانَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ يُحِبُّونَ مَنْ هَاجَرَ إِلَيْهِمْ وَلَا يَجِدُونَ فِي صُدُورِهِمْ حَاجَةً مِمَّا أُوتُوا وَيُؤْثِرُونَ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ وَلَوْ كَانَ بِهِمْ خَصَاصَ This ayah talks about the good akhlaq morality of the Ansar who decided to share whatever they had with their brothers and sisters from Makkah in order for them to find a good life there. So now when we look at this ayah, we come to understand that altruism it's something which we need to practice in our daily lives. Not only in Shahru Ramadan, where we send iftar to those who are in need. Not only when we celebrate Eid al-Adha, we do qurban, we send meat to other people. Every time we need to have this akhlaq, because it is akhlaq of the Holy Quran. When we look at the companions of Rasulullah, we know, yes, especially the Ansar got success because of this. There was one day, Rasulullah, when he went for Fathu Makkah, to conquer Makkah, to clean Makkah, when he was there, he had a story. All the Ansar have gathered and they are crying. Rasulullah said, why are they crying? Someone said, because they, they have had you have decided to leave them. You are going back to Makkah. The Holy Prophet said, no, I haven't said this. He went and he found them sitting and they were crying. Oh, Ans oh Ansar, why are you crying? Ya Rasulullah, you are going to leave us. The Holy Prophet said, no. He mentioned their merits. He said, oh, you people, you are the one who when people chase me from Makkah, you welcomed me. You gave me shelter, not only me, but also with my companions. He mentioned their merits and Rasulullah himself cried with the Ansar. And he said, no, once we finish this business here, we all go. We are going back to Medina to stay there. And that's why when you ask the question, why Rasulullah did not stay in Makkah after Makkah was freed from the Mushrikeen, he decided to go back to Medina. And it was there he lived until he died and he was buried there where today when we go for visit, we visit Rasulullah in that particular masjid and Nabawi. So now when we look at Al-Ansar and of course Muhajirin, we come to know that they used to have this good akhlaq of sharing with others. Brothers and sisters, these majalis of Muharram are very important for us to change some of our attitudes. What's wrong with us? What's wrong with us sometimes? When we are together in these which are known as multicultural centers, where you find some, for example, people from one particular geographical area, people from this particular Arab country, people from that particular area near either in India or Pakistan or Bangladesh or other places, other pla people who come, for example, from Africa and, and so on and so forth. Why then when we are together, we want to bring divisions amongst us? We want to favor one group instead of favoring others. Have we forgotten about Muhajirina and Ansar? Don't we know this ayah 50 of Surah 59, Surah Al-Hashr, ayah number 9? What's going on with us? Until sometimes, instead of all of us staying together, work together, pray together, do dua together, we go that, oh, this Barnama, this program is only for us, anyone else is not allowed. Children of this community, children of this particular geographical area are not allowed to come to this particular majlis. What are we doing? While we celebrate Karbala, celebrate in terms of making honor to Karbala, we need to look at the Ashab of Aba Abdullah al Hussein, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. In order for us to remember the tadhiyah which the ayah discusses. 
Now, why do we mention this ayah to the followers, especially today when we talk about this particular individual? When we look at history of the companions of Abba Abdullah, we have not seen someone like Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. We talk about altruism. We talk about those people who are selfless. No one can be like Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. We honor him. Why? Was he just because he was the son of Ali and Umm al-Banin, the brother of Hussein and Hassan? No, it's because he gave more than the companions of Rasulullah gave. And that's why when we talk about Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, we come to know the real meaning of altruism and selfless we see with Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. The story begins when Amirul Mu'minin Ali alayhi salam, Fatima to Zahra passed away. Ali wanted to get married. And it was at that moment, indeed, he married before Umm al-Banin. But then he called his brother Aqil. And he said, Aqil, I want you to find a house where I can go and marry. Maybe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is my dua. If I'm going to get children, they will be those heroes who will defend Islam. Here there is waqfa. There is something to remember and pay attention. Scholars say, men, when you marry, women, when you get married, have good intentions for the sake of Islam. Have that bigger picture, not only small picture. I want my husband, my wife, and then that's it. Think about what Amirul Muminina taught us when he said to Aqil, I want you to look at a house where if I marry, the children who will be born between me and that lady will be the defenders of Islam. And it was here Aqil said, give me some time. He was a scholar who knew the families and he knew their characteristics. Akil said, give me some times. And then he came back to Amirul Muminin and he said, yes, there's a house. I think you can marry them. These are Banu Kilab. They are heroes. Someone said in history, not only they used to go for hunting, but they used sometimes even to hunt the lions. They were those kind of people. When we mention this sometimes, someone may say, is it really? People can fight, can hunt lion? We say, yes, in Africa we have seen that. There is a tribe called Maasai. These Maasai, they don't, have, they don't carry guns. They don't carry guns. They carry spears. And they go sometimes in hunting, they fight against, they fight with lions. If a lion catches, for example, a, 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 an animal, they will go chase the lion, they will take part of that meat and they will leave the rest to the lion. People do that, subhanallah. And they say, well, we need to share, we can't take the whole meat because they are not Muslims, they don't know the issue of halal and haram, so they do that. Now, Imam Amirul Mumini said, I want someone who will come from that particular family, the children who will be hero. And there is nothing which you can Pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from your children, except to have that heroism. When you have people or children who are weak and they have khawf, they can't stand for themselves, then there is problem there. And that's why Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam, Allahumma sallila Muhammad wa alayhi Muhammad. He used to do dua and he used to say, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika, Minal Jubni Wal Kasali and so on and so forth. Oh Allah, I ask you to keep me away from laziness. Keep me away from fear. Sometimes you may find some men they fear things which they are not supposed to fear. So when we marry, we need to remember that our children need to have that courage to fight for the sake of Islam. Amirul Muminin said this to Akil. And later on, the marriage was arranged. Amirul Muminin married this lady. We all know she was known as Fatima bint Hizam al Kilabiya. Later on, she comes to the house of Amirul Muminin. She says, Don't call me Fatima or Ali or Amirul Muminin because these children, 
when they remember their mother, when they hear you call me Fatima, the musiba will be new every day. Amirul Muminin says, no problem, you are Ummul Banin. This is another dua. Meaning what? I want children to come from you. And Alhamdulillah, Lady Fatima, Binti Huzam, was bestowed four children. And these were heroes. And they were, all of them, at the service of Ahlul Bayt alayhi musalam. But it was Abu al-Fadl Abbas. His name is Abbas. He was known as Abbas. Abbas, Ummul Banin, made sure that the relationship between Abbas and Imam Hussein is so strong, so much so, that every time Abbas, if he doesn't see Hussein, he will feel lonely. And he wanted to be at the service of Abu Abdullah al Hussein, alayhi salam. Abu al Fadl al Abbas stayed with Amirul Muminin for 14 years. 14 years. Ali alayhi salam taught Abu al Fadl al Abbas the way how you fight with the enemies, the way how you stand firm when the enemy comes to you. And Abu al Fadl al Abbas graduated from the school of Amirul Muminin Ali alayhi salam. Do you know that when the battle of Sifin took place, Abbas was there. Amirul Muminin looked at the situation when people were fighting and he knew that there was a moment no one could defeat some enemies. He said to Abu al-Fadil al-Abbas, now go. Go represent me. He went and he fought bravely. But he was covering his face. The enemies, when they saw Abbas, they thought he was like Amirul Muminin because of their height. When he fought and he finished the fighting, they said, We see Ali bin Abi Talib, but why Ali is covering his face today? Ali, can you remove your face covering? We want to see you. It was at that moment Abu Fadl Abbas got the sign, Now you can remove the cover of your face. And they saw Abbas. The way he used to fight, it was like the way of Amirul Mu'mineen, Ali bin Abi Talib, salawatullahi wa salamuhu So now there's a lesson here. Ali, you are Imam, al muttaqin Muwahideen, Zahid. They want to enter Masjid. The, the last one to come out of the Masjid. Why you didn't make your children like you? Just come to the masjid, pray, go home. But Ali alayhi salam wanted to say, no, I have taught them ibadah. They pray well, but when it comes to defense of Islam, they also need to be there. Sometimes, unfortunately, we hear stories like the one which happened in Syria when ISIS was formed. Some of these shuyukh who don't follow mother of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, they used to encourage young people, you have to go fight for the sake of Islam. And when you die, you will be with Rasulullah. You will have lunch with Rasulullah. Astaghfirullah, even some of them, when they were captured, they found them with spoons and uh, other things which you use them for eating. They say, why you carry spoon in the home? They said, because our shuyukh told us when we die, we'll go and have dinner with Rasulullah. That is the madhab. Then what happened? Their children could not participate in the battles. One was asked clearly. He was from one Arab country. Why your children don't come to fight in these battles? He said, well, my children need to go to study in America. They said, your children want to go to study to America. What about our children? He said, well, your children are your children and my children are my children. Can you imagine what a double standard they used to use it to con people and to, to, to spread an ideology which is wrong? Amirul Muminin Ali alayhi salam was not like that. And Aima of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam were not like that. Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas will participate in battle and Amirul Muminin alayhi salam would be there. Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas got married to this lady by the name Lubaba. And they had four children, as per some narrations. The one who was given the title of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas was known as Fadl. 
Abul Fadl is because of Fadl. The second one was known as Ubaidullah. This Ubaidullah, the family of the family tree of Abul Fadl al Abbas, many Sadat who are from the line of Abul Fadl al Abbas, they come from this Ubaidullah. The third one was known as Qasim, and the fourth one, Muhammad. These two were killed in Karbala. Now, when we talk about just before the killing of Abul Fadl al Abbas, they were martyred there. Abul Fadl al Abbas grew up with his children and he taught them as well you need to defend the madhab of Ahlul Bayt salam, properly. Now, when we look at the tarbiyah of Abul Fadl al Abbas, we see the following things. Number one, Basira. Number two, we see Shaja'a. Number three, we see Karam. Number four, we see Ithar. When we look at number one, Basira, this is exactly what Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq said. My uncle Abbas acted according to Basira. There are two key words in Arabic. One is Basira and another one is Basar. Basar is sight. Basira is insight. Scholars are telling us that we need two things in order for us to be proper Muslims. We need Basar and we need Basira. But your Basira is more important than Basar. Your insight is more important than sight. What will do, what will you do with your sight if your insight is blind? Abu al Fadl al Abbas acted according to the principles of Basira. He was there in Karbala. We ask the question why was he the last one to stand and he was not martyred with other Shuhada? Why he was there until the last moment? It was this Basira. He was following the orders of the Imam of his time, Abi Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam. Shaja'a. Yes, as we are going to see, he had that shaja'a, that bravery. He could not fear anyone, but people feared him. Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, nobility and dignity which he had, you could see it clearly the way he behaved in front of al-Imam al-Hasan wal Hussein alayhi salam after the shahad of Amir al-Mu'mineen. Ithar, yes, and that's why when we look at Ithar, when he preferred others before himself, we see that in every majlis, every year, the majlis which is known as Majlis of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, we talk about Ithar. He was a selfless person who was ready to give whatever for the sake of Islam. This was the tarbiyah. He had other titles, Qamar Bani Hashim. He was known as the moon of Bani Hashim. He was a handsome man. And that's why when he was martyred, many ladies who were there, they remembered the face of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. He was that who was known as Hamil Liwa al-Hussein alayhi salam. He was the standard bearer of Hussein. In Arabic battles, in Islamic battles, and in Arab battles, the one who used to carry the flag to lead others to fight was not a normal person. He would be the one who has been trusted by the leader. Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas was like that. Not only that, he was known as Saqi Utasha Karbala. He was the one who was the water supplier to the, those who were thirst in Karbala. And they depended on him. The history says that on the seventh day, of Muharram, when Umar bin Saad gave the order to stop the water to the camp of Abi Abdullah al Hussein, Abu al Fadl al Abbas went with some people and he fought until he got some water he brought to the camp of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. And that's why he is known as the water supplier to the camp of Abi Abdullah al Hussein. When we look at what Abu al Fadl al Abbas has done, Sometimes it's not easy for us to comprehend. This normal individual, how did he manage to achieve what he managed to achieve? Then we remember what Imam Ali ibn al-Hussein Sajjad, 
Zainul Abidin alayhi salam said in the courtyard of Yazid when he was there after the martyrdom of Karbala of the Shuhada of Karbala Imam Sajjad alayhi salam when he was there he said allow me O Yazid to stand or to sit on the mimbar on this wood in order for me to talk about Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam but Yazid opposed people who were near there they said why allow him it's because of what Yazid and his father Muawiyah did to the people of Sham, they claimed Yazid and his father, they were Ahlul Bayt. Subhanallah. They are Ahlul Bayt. Now all of a sudden people here, there is another group of people who are known Ahlul Bayt have been captured. So we want to hear them. Yazid feared that people now will know the truth. They push him. Yazid allow him. Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam stood and he said, after he was given opportunity, he said, Utina sitta wa fuddilna bisabin. We have been given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala six things. And Allah has favored us with seven things. He started mentioning them. He said, Utina al ilm. Allah has given us Ahlul Bayt knowledge. We have knowledge, no one else has this knowledge. Number two, we have al-hilm, clemency. We have knowledge and hilm, ilm wal-hilm. Subhanallah, scholars of akhlaq today, they say, if you find a scholar who has ilm but doesn't have hilm, there may be problems there. Look at Rasulullah Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Allahumma sallallahu Muhammad wa alayhi the ayah clearly says, وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَمْ فَضُّ مِنْ حَوْلِكَ فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَمْ فَضُّ مِنْ حَوْلِكَ It is because of the mercy, rahma of Allah. Ya Rasulullah, you became soft heart in front of them. وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا If you are hard hearted, غليظ, very difficult to deal with people لم فضوا من حال من حولك they would run away from you you need ilm and you need hilm Imam Sajjad says we have been given these two the three the third thing he says samaha forgiveness people may wrong us but we when we forgive we forgive you remember that particular individual who entered the city of Medina he saw Imam Zainul Abidin alayhi salam. This is after Karbala. And he started abusing him. Use foul language. Imam alayhi salam looked at him and he said, It seems like you're a stranger. And indeed, he was from Sham, from, from the land of Muawiyah. It seems you're a stranger. Maybe you don't know us. If you're hungry, maybe you don't have food. Welcome home. We can give you some food. If you don't have place to stay, come and stay with us. If you need assistance, we can give you whatever. And he continued to abuse him, but Imam alayhi salam used another method. And even not only him personally, he started abusing his mother. And Imam alayhi salam said, if you have, whatever you have said is truth, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive my mother. But, but if it's wrong, and I know it's wrong, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive you. These are Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. You see Samaha. All of a sudden, this particular individual came to know that he was wrong. He followed up Imam Zainul Abidin and he became a follower of Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. Imam says the fourth thing we have is Al Fasaha. We have, given, we have been given eloquence. When we speak, people listen. And then you remember Amirul Mu'minin, you remember Zahra alayhi salam, you remember Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein, Sajjad, Zainab alayhi salam, all of them were given that fasaha eloquence. He said, and we have been given shaja'a, bravery. Allah has given us this, wal mahabbatu fi qulubil mu'minin. Allah has given us love. This love is in the hearts of al mu'minin. Any believing man of, or woman comes to know about our merits, they will love us. So we have been given al-ilmu wal-hilmu, 
والسماح والفصاح والشجاعة والمحبة في قلوب المؤمنين but فضلنا بسبع Allah has favored us with seven things what are these seven he said minna an nabiyu al mukhtar the holy messenger comes from us we are ahlul bayt rasulullah is from us wa minna as siddiq the one who speaks the truth amirul mu'minin is from us wa minna at tayyar the one who flies with his wings with angels ja'far at tayyar is from us wa minna asadullahi wa asadu rasuli ali alayhi salam the lion of allah and the lion of rasulullah is from us wa minna sayyidatu nisa'i ahli al janna the chief of all the ladies in paradise sayyida zahra is from us wa minna sibta hadhihi al umma the two grandsons of rasulullah the chief, the chiefs of the youth of paradise are from us wa minna mahadiyu hadhihi al umma imam mahdi alayhi salam is from us Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad When we look at Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas then we come to understand there is a link from what Imam Sajjad alayhi salam says and what we see with Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas that is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who bestowed upon him Now coming to Karbala The ninth day of Muharram is known as Tasu'a This particular day when they knew the shuhada of karbala that our days are numbers they, they are hours only umar bin saad came he spoke to shimr and he said shimr you know i want you to go to speak to hussein bin ali tell him we are going to attack all of them we are going to kill them let them choose whatever they want we want them to give bay'ah to yazid shimri bin dhil jawshan la'natullah alayhi went near the camp of aba abdullah al hussein and he met with abul fadl al abbas he said to abul fadl al abbas oh abul fadl al abbas you know what my mom and your mom are banu kilab from the same tribe we are ready to give you clemency we will give you freedom because our mothers are related leave aba abdullah will give you that freedom abu al fadl al abbas looked at him and he cast him he says may la'na of allah be upon you and la'na be upon the one who has sent you and all of you are mal'unin what are you telling me you want me to leave the grandson of rasulullah alone for me to be saved la'natullahi alayk he was so angry abul fadl al abbas so shimri said you have only one day see whatever you want to do they spoke with aba abdullah abi abdullah al husain alayhi salam said no problem after talking to the companions they say we will use this one day in our life in order for us to pray to be closer to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that particular night Eve of Ashura, Zuhair bin Qain, comes to Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. You know now they know tomorrow is the final day. Zuhair as an old person, he said, Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, let me tell you a story. Because I'm an old man. When your father, Amir al-Mu'minin Ali alayhi salam, married your mother, we knew why. He said he wanted to get heroes. So now I know you are here. But listen to me, Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. Tomorrow is the final day. Make sure you are there to defend Abi Abdullah Al Hussein. Make sure you will be there. Do not desert Aba Abdullah Al Hussein. Historians are telling us that Abu Fadl Al Abbas became even more angry to Zuhair bin Qain. He said, "What are you saying? Will I leave Aba Abdullah Al Hussein alayhi salam? No, Zuhair. Let me tell you." Tomorrow you will see something which you have never seen in your life. You will see the way I'm going to defend Aba Abdullah and I'm telling you you have never seen such a thing. Now comes the day of Ashura. 
every companion of Abba Abdullah is ready to, to sacrifice himself for the sake of, of Abba Abdullah. Now, when the time came, Abu al-Fadl Abbas is looking at his brothers, one after the other, have become martyrs. He comes forward to Abi Abdullah al Hussein and he said, Oh Hussein, oh my brother, allow me to go and fight against these people. Abi Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam said, Wait, oh my brother, wait, don't go. Abu al Fadl al Abbas is waiting, he sees everyone, and after one they go down, and he said, Oh Abu Abdullah, allow me to go. This now is too much for me to bear. Abi Abdullah al Hussein alayhi salam said, and that is when, according to the writers of Maktal, they said, When the thirsty was unbearable to Abi Abdullah al Hussein and the children of Karbala, it was at that moment when Abi Abdullah he said to Abi al Fadl al Abbas, Now go bring us some water. Abu al Fadl al Abbas went, he fought bravely until he reached the river Euphrates. He takes the containers, he filled them with water, and then he takes some water with his hands. He wants to drink that water. He looked at the water, then he remembered Abba Abdullah al Hussein. He said, O oh my soul, O oh my nafs, min ba'dil Hussein huni. O oh my soul, perish. You will perish after Hussein. How can I drink this water while Abba Abdullah al Hussein is thirsty? He fills the container, he mounts on the horse. He wants to come back. They look at Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. They cannot face him in front. They went behind him and someone targeted his right hand. He chopped it off. Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas carried the water with the left. And he said, Oh people, if you are going to cut off my right hand, I bear witness that I'm going to defend my Imam with the left. He carries water with the left hand. Then they, they targeted that Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. Subhanallah, he manages to carry the water with his teeth. And then they targeted that water when Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas was sitting on the horse. Someone saw Abu al-Fadl <clears throat> and he said, don't allow him to reach the camp of Abba Abdullah. He came with the iron rod. They hit Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas so hard so. Now he was going to fall on the ground. Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, he was sitting without his arms. He was hit so hard, now he's falling. Can you imagine you are falling without your hands? Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas fell on the ground. They stabbed him. It was at that moment Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas said, As-salamu alayka ya Abba Abdullah. Hussein came running towards Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. When he reached him, there was an arrow in the eye of Abu al-Fadl. He couldn't see the one who was coming near him. And he said, O oh, Abdullah, O oh, servant of Allah, are you coming to kill me before my brother reaches me? <clears throat> Hussein alayhi salam said, O oh, Abu al-Fadl, is me. And he was carrying him, he put his head on the lap. Can you imagine, subhanallah, this, this scene, Hussein is carrying Abbas without his arms. Imam Abi Abdullah al Hussein is looking at Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, he's carrying him. Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas said, what's your plan? What are you doing about Abba Abdullah? Hussein alayhi salam said, I'm going to take you back to the tent. 
It was at that moment Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas said, Oh, my brother, don't take me to the tent. Some poets said it was as if Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas was saying, I promise water to Sakina, I promise water to the children of the tent. Don't take me there. Imam Abi Abdullah al Hussein tries to carry Abu Fadl al Abbas. He's injured so much until he breathes his last. He becomes Shaheed. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. It was at that moment Hussein bin Ali bin Abi Talib looks at the right and the left. There is no any companion to help Abba Abdullah. Ya Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas, you made Hussein to cry. Imam Hussein alayhi salam said, Al-Ana in kasara dhahri. It is now my back has been broken. It is now I don't have any other plan. Hal min nasirin yansuruna? Is there any helper to help us? Is there anyone to come to rescue Ahlul Bayt? But there was no one. Now imagine Abi Abdullah al Hussein return to the tent. Imagine Abu Abdullah meets with Sakina. What would be the first question? Oh, my dear father, did Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas bring some water? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. I don't know how calamity this was when Sayyida Zainab came to learn that Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas has been murdered. Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Wa sayalamu alladhina zalamu ala Muhammadin ayya munqalabin yanqalibun. ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم. أبو الفضل العباس، my dear brothers and sisters، is known as باب الحوائج. باب الحوائج، the gateway to fulfill your حاجات. our dear brothers and sisters in Iraq، they don't call أبو الفضل العباس عباس، they call him إمام العباس because of the miracles and karamat which had happened. let us pray to Allah سبحانه وتعالى. ببركة العباس يا الله فلفيل أو حاجات ببركة العباس يا الله كيو أو مريض ببركة العباس يا الله كيو those brothers and sisters who are ill ببركة العباس يا الله our children who are deviating from the path bring them back يا رب العالمين يا الله ببركة العباس our houses if there's something which is not right يا الله keep the affairs right ببركة العباس يا الله ببركة العباس يا الله we ask we ask you to bless this gathering accept the du'a fulfill the حاجات make us go for the زيارة in كربلاء يا رب العالمين and to attain the شفاعة of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas and Imam al-Hussein alayhim as-salam. We ask you, Ya Allah, to keep us alive with good health in order for us, insha'Allah, to witness the haram of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas. Bi rahmatika, Ya Arham al-Rahimin. And for those brothers and sisters who are not well, let us recite Amma Yujibu al-Muttara five times together, please. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعاه ويكشف السوء أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعا أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعا هو يكشف السوء يا الله يا الله يا الله يا الله يا الله يا الله اللهم ببركة العباس اقض حوائجنا شاف مرضانا ارحم موتانا يا الله we ask you 
by the blessings of Abu al-Fadl al-Abbas to have mercy on our marhumin and Allah cure all the marid Ya Allah make this center Ya Allah to get success with Barakat al-Abbas reward all those brothers and sisters who work so hard to prepare this majalis Ya Rabbal Alameen Bi rahmatika Ya Arhamar Rahimin Rahim Allahu man qara al-Fatiha ma'as salawat Allah wa salli ala Muhammad wa ali Salawat. I will beseech you, I will grieve you into the night. I will beseech you, I will grieve you into the night. You are my master, I am alone, I call on to you. You are my master, I am alone, I call on to you. Because I will be with you till the end, Hussein. In my eyes is always tears, tears of pain. Like a river flows for your love, Hussein. Every broken heart cries out your name. Cries out your name. Ruhi wa qalbi ladayka. Sallallahu alayka. Ya Aba Abdillah. Ya Aba Abdillah. Ruhi wa qalbi ladayka. Sallallahu alayka. Ya Aba Abdillah. Ya Aba Abdillah. From your shrine I can't bear to stay apart The feeling of your love ignites my heart Your name gives meaning to my soul To you I raise my hands and call From your shrine I can't bear to stay apart The flame of your love ignites my heart your name gives meaning to my soul To you I raise my hands and call Mere Mola Ya Hussein Jan Mere Mola Ya Hussein Jan Hussein Janam Hussein Janam My tears for you will never dry Mere Mola Ya Hussein Jan Mere Mola Ya Hussein Jan Hussein Janam Hussein Janam My tears for you will never dry For every step I take is to you Hussein Till my final breath your love will remain even if they take my feet and my hands, I will call it to your holy land, to your holy land. Ruhi wa qalbi ladayka, sallallahu alayka. Ya Aba Abdillah, Ya Aba Abdillah, Ruhi wa qalbi ladayka, sallallahu alayka. Ya Aba Abdillah, Ya Aba Abdillah, Salawat. Santibon, 
Tutuğunu edelim biz. از آن شده دیگه درسته؟ استغفر الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الحي القيوم ذو الجلال والإكرام وأتوب إليه ما شاء الله لا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم توكلت على الحي الذي لا يموت والحمد لله الذي لم يتخذ صاحبته ولا ولدا ولم يكن له شريك في الملك ولم يكن له ولي من الظل وكبره تكبيرا الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن مولانا ومقتدانا وحادينا بالحق أمير المؤمنين علي ولي الله أشهد أن مولانا ومقتدانا وحاضينا بالحق أمير المؤمنين عليا حجة الله حي على الصلاة